Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter what time of night or day. I'm still just as glad you stopped by the channel. Thank you ever so much. This is the Social Gospel Channel, a part of the Social Gospel Church, which is the uh, Worship and Learning Center, and the Social Gospel Blog. I'm the CEO, I guess you could say. There is any such thing as a little one-man ministry like this. But CEO I am. I'm also the janitor. And everything in between. This is another installment of our ongoing biblical study series where we're going through the Bible one chapter at a time and then going through sentence, word for word, sentence by sentence and, and basically converting it into modern English. Every which time I will invariably take the time out to explain those uh, those little translations in a way that everybody can understand. One thing about Jesus, he is not a difficult person to get to know. And if you want to be with him, if you want to join his crusade, or if he just want him as a teacher, he was there for you. That you can be sure. Now, to finish the thought, here in our ongoing biblical study series for this week, we have chapter 2, part 2, pardon me, part 2 of First Corinthians chapter 14. This will be verses 18 through 40. Part two and the final part of 14. Now, in last week's lesson, we dug through the first portion of 1 Corinthians 14. And so today, let's take up where we left off. You will recall my pointing out certain teachings within certain denominations sex and Christian cults regarding speaking in tongues that are being incorrectly taught and disseminated within and to a lesser extent outside of the greater uh, excuse me the greater Christian church Today, I will continue to use the Apostle Paul's own words, so help me God, to instruct you all as to what is and is not considered to be an orderly and reverent worship service of Christ as the Son of God. This includes the original and, incorrect, and the, the correct definitions of two of the nine spiritual gifts. I'll get into that in a couple of minutes. Let's all begin at verse 18. Or at chapter 8. Uh, excuse me. Let's, let's all begin at 1 Corinthians 14. Commencing at verse 18. Going through 20, uh, verse 25. And I quote... I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, stop thinking like children. In respect to evil, be infants. But in your thinking, be adults. 
and the law it is written. Though or through men of strange tongues and through the lips of foreigners, uh, I will speak to this people. But even then, they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Tongues, then, are a sign. Not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is for believers, not for unbelievers. The Apostle Paul continues. So if the whole church comes together, <clears throat> and everybody speaks in tongues, and some who do not understand, or some unbelievers come in, will they not say you are out of your mind? But if an unbeliever or someone who does not understand comes in while everybody is prophesying, he will be convinced by all that he is a sinner and will be judged by all and the secrets of his heart will be laid bare. So he will fall down and worship God, exclaiming, God is really among you. Close quote. There is a right way and a wrong way to pray in tongues, people. Let me break this down for you. It's not as complicated as it sounds. To put this in a nutshell, if that's even possible with Paul's writings, churches are not going to get any new converts simply by speaking in tongues. They will gain new members by prophesying in first and foremost, which means to accurately and decisively declare the Word of God. But we can gain new believers and additional saved souls by speaking in the native language of those who are listening. A non-believer or first-time visitor will be able to see clearly and hear, this, uh, and hear the Spirit of the Lord with the Spirit being made manifest in any one of a number of different ways according to the gifts of the Spirit that we went over last week in last week's study. On the other hand, I have actually been in churches where people stood up and prayed in tongues all at once with no one there to interpret, assuming that what they were saying of actually making some sense in another language. I thought it rather strange at the time that up to several dozen people or more could be speaking in tongues all at the same time as if they were competing with each other in some childish game of spirituality. This is nowhere near what the Bible says about speaking in tongues, and I'm going to prove it to you. How do we evaluate a potential new church? Needless to, stay, needless to say, I did not go back to any of those churches. And if you stumble onto one of them in your search for a church home, don't be shy about getting out of there at your earliest opportunity. Many of these speak only in tongues and nothing else churches, upon closer examination, turn out to be cults. I have had the misfortune of learning this the hard way, because it was just such a church that broke up my first marriage. So now you have been warned, and so you don't make the same mistakes I made all those decades ago. The 
Bible is a sacred and holy document. It is quite apparent from Paul's writing in these few verses of chapter 14 that the greater church has had a problem with these kind of church denominations, close quote, almost from the start. It's just that Paul's words closely parallel my own experience with many of these so-called charismatic churches. That's what they really love to call themselves. During my 30 plus years as a born again Christian, as a minister of music, as a Christian, as a Christian writer, and as a Christ follower. The Word of God is not something to be taken lightly or trivialized over. The Bible is not just another book sold at Barnes & Noble or on Amazon. Each and every word within it is sacred, holy, sanctified, and it must be taken very seriously. Now a brief word about the sins of those who masquerade as churches. And there are those out there. Therefore I say any teaching of the Bible that is inaccurate or misleading Assuming that the incorrect teaching is being done un unknowingly due to insufficient knowledge is a very serious matter indeed. But anybody who teaches the Bible in a premeditated way so as to control and manipulate people or to milk the members for money sins against the Lord Almighty Cults who masquerade as churches, and unfortunately there are a disconcerting number of those, will be found guilty of apostasy at best, or blasphemy of the Holy Spirit at worst, when it comes their time to stand before the throne of judgment. Jesus said that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit where someone deliberately defames God or t twists and perverts the Bible's teachings in such a way as to enrich themselves or to do damage within the church or who, re or who refuses to believe that Jesus was and still is the Son of God? These are the only sins that cannot be forgiven. And Jesus said, if he called it blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, you'd better believe it, because Jesus cannot lie. I will now continue without further comment in verse 26. What, and I quote, what shall we say then, brothers, when you come together, Everyone has a hymn, or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All these must be done for the strengthening of the church. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two, or at the most three, should speak one at a time. And then someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, no no, please, not now. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak and the others should weigh carefully what is being said. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. 
for you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. Close quote. That's 1 Corinthians 14, verses 26 through 33. There is a time and place for speaking in tongues. It is clear from this quotation that the Apostle Paul is giving the early church an example of what a church service should look like and how it should proceed. Everyone is to use the spiritual gift that God gave them to the best of their ability and as they feel led by the Spirit of the risen Lord. If someone speaking in, is speaking in tongues and no one is there to interpret, then they, they should do so quietly to themselves unless there is another there to interpret. Prophecy or proclaiming the Word of God as it applies to a certain moment in time and to certain people too can be done without second party interpretation. But praying in tongues aloud cannot nor should it ever be done in a disruptive or distracting manner. Never. I will quote the last three verses of this week's lesson. And I quote, did the word of God originate with you? Paul wrote. Or are you the only people it has reached? If anybody thinks he is a prophet or spiritually gifted, let him acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. If he ignores this, then he himself will be ignored. Therefore, my brothers, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Close quote. That's verses 37 through 40 of 1 Corinthians 14. We can worship or pray in, in modern times anytime anywhere Paul the Apostle was saying as he wrote these words these last three uh, verses in particular that what he was writing is the truth because he is led by the spirit of the risen Lord as he wrote his letters to the Corinthians to the Romans, to the Galatians, and many others. Anyone who refuses to go along with the order of worship, as Paul has explained it, will be ignored if they try to speak out of turn, or otherwise unduly dominate the discussion within the service. As Paul wrote, everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. We are all adults, and so we should know what it means to be fitting and orderly in a service. And we should always do so out of a reverence for God that is highlighted by a sense of awe and worship. But there is one more important thing to consider. We don't have to be in a church to pray to God or to praise Him or to worship Him or to give Him thanks and express our gratitude. Now, we don't have to be in a church to pray to God or, or to praise Him or to worship Him. We, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, can praise, worship, or pray to Him anytime and anywhere. To be at worship 
and to be given God praise is the very essence of his spirit-filled worship service. And it's a frame of mind that we should try to maintain every day. So let's all continue to use what we learn as we grow to live a better life for Jesus. And that concludes our in-depth Bible study for today. If you liked what you heard, you can subscribe to our blog, which gives you access to our uh, video channel, and to our online store. Plus, you'll see writings from thousands of other writers and all kinds of different genres available too on Medium and on Substack. On Medium just search for me at uh, Reverend Paul J. Burner. That's B-E-R-N by the way. And on Substack is Pastor Paul J. Burr, same guy. Or just type in my name, Paul J. Burr, into the search box and press enter. Everything will come right up for you. The paid version of the blog is $5 a month or $50 a year. That's all. That's, that's all. Works at the 16 cents a day. Quite inexpensive, you say. And you help support this ministry by doing so. All you gotta send us is your email address and your first, first name or your uh, online name. Nothing else. Your information, your data, will be safe and secured. That I can promise you. You can also help support us by buying one of these shirts, like this one I've got on. If you can't read, quite, quite read that, it says Theme. T-H-E-M-E. The cross. This is, this is the T. Capital H, lowercase e, he refers to Jesus. And me is self explanatory. There's 20 more styles a lot like this. Catchy little um, words or phrases on them. And by the way, besides being on the front, it's all across the back as well. In big white letters. There's 21 different styles. They're either black or some of them also come in pink, but not all of them. Sizes of medium through extra large. That's two double extra large, actually. They're 1995 with free shipping. Go to Greatest Servant. Spell it just like it sounds, all one word, all lowercase. Greatest Servant dot Gumroad, G U M R O A D dot com. You will find my, my good our shop there where you can pick up a shirt. Most of this shipping is done by USPS, unless otherwise specified. And let me, let me see what else can I think of. Oh, before you go, don't, for, don't forget, please give us a like. I need those likes, if you please. A share or two. And a subscribe. 
the description to just a YouTube channel is free. We put out a minimum, a minimum of two videos a week or two blog postings a week. Four total each week on the blog and on the Bible studies. Completely different Bible studies. Christ and things you've probably never seen before. But they're there. If you want to send us a donation or a nonprofit, registered nonprofit, excuse me, on PayPal and on Stripe. Stripe.com. The instructions. For sending the, uh, the donations, pardon me, can be found in the bottom of the uh, dialogue, uh, dialogue page. These are the instructions I mean. You find it right there, and you can send us whatever amount if you like. There we you will also find an address, a mailing address, uh, in case you want to send us a check in the mail. You can do that. That's fine. Lots of clears the bank. I'm just kidding about that part. And we we could use every dime, really. I do this by myself. I do not draw a salary or anything like that. I do everything that I do for the glory of God and to profess my, my undying love for Jesus Christ. If you haven't found that undying love yourself yet, now you got a place to source it from. You know, source it from Him. And he will listen to you. And so, I want to thank each and every one of you for the privilege of your time. You are also very, very much appreciated. Having run out of things to say, at least for this time around, everybody be blessed. I said, be blessed. In Jesus. Mighty